about unrestricted Aubrey and well we are talking podcast stuff we are talking dynamite we're talking everything here on this podcast there's a lot of exciting things happening on dynamite well yeah I know right like it, it's 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 almost time for some big business like big I am business. so big business I am so excited I'm so excited for everything we've got going on you know Tony tweeted a few weeks ago that this is a uh, going to be an exciting 2024 in AEW, oh, yeah. and uh, I've never been more excited than I am right at this moment. There's so much going on, and there's so much going on in in women's wrestling, and I think that yes. that's uh, that's what I think makes this such a different time for AEW and such a really cool time. Right, like we've got Diana coming in and just kicking ass. We've got. You know, Timeless Tony Storm is one of the most exciting things in wrestling happening right now. And then if you look at ROH, there's all of these other awesome things that are happening. We've got Nyla killing it with promos. We've got Billy and Athena, like Lexi's doing her thing. Like, I love seeing all of the women we have at this company succeeding in all of these different avenues that we're getting. Like, Julia Hart has been an incredible TBS champion. Anna Jay, uh, Ruby Soho, like, everything going on with the women is incredible. I'm so, so excited. Yeah, and I'm excited for today's show. What do we got going on today? Today, I am I'm so so excited to have one of my absolutely favorite people. I say I feel like I say that a lot every time we come into this podcast. But this this one's like absolutely legit. Um, we have Rachel Ellering here today. Hello, how are you? Hi guys, I'm great. I um I wanted to kind of bring you both a smile. So I've got the Sue Bird shirt for Aubrey. Yes. Which uh, yes, her and I like mine's over here. And then, Will, I promise I didn't forget about you in case I get chilly during the pod. I've got my Denver Nuggets. Money. Oh, look at that. And it's NBA Jam style. Is that yeah. Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic on it? You got it. You yeah, got it. that's great. Championship one. So, in case I get chilly, I can kind of bring a smile to Will's face as well, but it's here in the background nonetheless. So, I like I'm so excited to be here, guys. I like your bring a smile like you're not going to already. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, it's a it's a Monday morning when we're doing this. So <laughs> that's true. I, I just I'm like, it, you're incapable of being mad ever or upset or even when you are upset, you're like adorable about it. Like, I just don't like how that's going. Like, I think I described you recently as like uh, a grandma trapped in a young woman's body. Because oh, my gosh. <laughs> Because you're just like so supportive and wonderful. Like, how are you doing today? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. We should all try to be that way, right? <laughs> no, uh, and legit. I think Rachel is probably on the top of my list of most pleasant interactions when I'm, uh, I guess, pulling back the curtain. Um, I rarely work a collision in person. I work collision every week, but usually I, I do a lot of work from home. Uh, but on the occasion that I do go in probably like once or twice a month, uh, like one of my most pleasant interactions is always Rachel Ellering. And, uh, mm -hmm. and so, and again, that happened this past week, happening, happening to be at collision. And uh, it's always, again, like you said, it's that I don't want to call it grandma energy. Cause that doesn't feel like kind, but it is really what it is, right? It, where it's just like somebody who's always checking up on you and making sure that you're okay and you want to make sure that they're okay. And uh, no, like, again, just one of my favorite people to ever interact with. Uh, and so glad that this last year you've really gotten to be a part of the AEW family and Ring of Honor. And uh, I mean, l l let's start with your, your first go round with AEW um, that happened back in 2020. Uh, and it was part of the women's tag team tournament, the Deadly Draw, as we called it at the time. Um, and you got to team up with uh, somebody that a lot of people forget uh, actually wrestled at one point. It wrestled at multiple points, actually. But uh, our own Dasha Gonzalez uh, was actually uh, your tag partner in the tournament. What was that like? She sure was. Uh, so it was surprising to me when they told me that. They're like, okay, Dasha's going to be your partner. And I was like, Dasha, Dasha, or is there a Dasha I'm not familiar with? Like, either way, let's rock, right? <laughs> uh, and that was kind of the first thing I had done since leaving NXT once a bunch of us got let go at the start of the pandemic. And so I was just like nervous Nancy all week about it, right? You kind of second guess, like, do I know what I'm doing? Is this the right thing for me to kind of come back for? And it was like such a unique experience because Dasha's obviously not like, a wrestler 365 days out of the year. 
but she was such a joy to be around. Like, what a kind soul. <laughs> I mean, maybe she has the grandma energy that you guys are talking about too, but Dude. she is so sweet and genuinely cares about it, genuinely wanted to do well, was really thoughtful with it. And so when you work with people like that, I mean, it's just, it's easy, right? when people want it to go well and they really care and they're really selfless about it, like it just makes the job so easy. It's just, just a joy to be around. So I think we faced the winners of the whole thing. Yeah. If I, Eva Lisa why do I really barely yeah. remember that? Like it yeah. was another life. <laughs> 2020 was like 87 years ago in my head, but um, it was, uh, yeah, it was at Daly's place. So that was my first experience there. And yeah, I was, I was happy to be there. I think speaking of positive energy, I think, if I remember correctly, Jerry Lynn was the coach for that. So it was like, let's get all of the most positive people in the world in the same match and try to not explode in sunshine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. And then Diamante and Ivelisse are like, we hate y'all. What's going Yay. on? <laughs> Just get your anger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jerry really is like the most wholesome coach there, right? He, that, that feels that, like that the biggest piece of... That feels like the biggest piece of exposure, by the way, is that he is like as kind of a guy as he is for somebody who made his his name in ECW and somebody who is known for everything that Jerry Lynn's been known for. It's like, no, actually, Jerry Lynn's like the kindest guy in the world. Using he, someone else's blood to write the word die on his own body. I'm like, that's not sweet old Jerry Lynn. <laughs> There's no way. My favorite Jerry thing is when he like would be cutting a promo in normal voice and then he's like, because I'm Jerry Lynn. <laughs> it is like, I laugh anytime I see a clip of that somewhere. I'm like, oh yeah, Jerry, you go, man, you go. Your Minnesota nice turns into like screamo rock guy. Oh my God. He's, 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 he's the best. He's the best. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so around that same period, you also made your AEW Dark debut. You lost to Penelope Ford. Um, so yeah, th so talk about that that pandemic period. You, as you mentioned, um, leaving NXT and really, you know, a lot of people found opportunity at Daly's Place during that time period. And uh, so, how necessary did you feel that was for your time as a professional wrestler? I mean, that was like huge for me and it almost sounds silly saying that because it's like okay it was you know an episode of dark you know and there was no crowd so like how much pressure can there be and but it was a really big deal for me because you know i'm sure you guys know if you you get released from somewhere it really can mess with your head a bit i was only in nxt just like over a year year and change um you know i had zero tv matches when i was there so i was just kind of doing coconut shows as you know you call them and just chilling in the warehouse six days a week. So it wasn't the experience I thought or wanted to have there, right? Which happens. And, you know, obviously now I've kind of processed that. I say that like it was a trauma, but, you know, you kind of go into things like, oh, this has been my dream since I was 16. You envision it going a certain way. When it doesn't, you know, it can be a little disappointing. So I kind of had to process that. And Daly's Place was like my first experience coming out of that, you know, and just being around people I was so familiar with just from my time on the independent scene and, you know, even people like that were on the same tours and stardom in Japan with me. And it just felt so homey, like right away, even though I was just there, you know, the two days um, I had wrestled Penelope prior to that. And so she was just also lovely to be around. And, um, you know, it's just good to be around people who are, they all like for the love of the game, right? We all genuinely love this and, so it was just good people to be around for kind of my first experience coming out of that. And it's like a confidence booster, right? When everybody there is kind of building you up when it's your first thing back in a really long time. And so I left feeling super confident about it. And then I also left like, hey, I think this is where I want to like put my roots down <laughs> next, right? You kind of set a new goal on top of the 87 you already have in, in wrestling. But it's like, I really just liked the energy there. And like, you can just feel that, right? Like I still feel it every week now when I'm there. It's just a different energy than places I've been prior. And um, it's an energy I really truly love. You were also coming off of a injury at the time, right? Yeah, I was. I, um, I tore my ACL uh, when I was in NXT. And so that was my first major injury you know i've had like you know the broken noses and the busted lips and stuff but nothing that required surgery so that was my first experience with that and oh my gosh you guys i don't wish that on my worst enemy it was 
I initially, the first couple of days was like, I'm just going to kill it with kindness, right? Any, <laughs> all of this, I'm just going to be so positive and kind and it's going to be great. And then, you know, after a couple of days, you're like, oh man, oh, this is going to be really, really hard to kind of keep my mind right through the whole thing. And I'm super competitive and I've been an athlete my entire life. So to then just suddenly be like, oh no, you can't even walk around your house without needing help. It just changes everything. And I'm so fortunate that my fiance, Chris, who you guys know, um, was just like any little thing I needed, right? You wake up in the middle of the night and you have to get up and well, I can't walk, right? And so he has to come like lift my leg out of the bed. And he's just obviously so selfless and kind. And so I was so glad that like, I wasn't just alone in an apartment in Orlando, Florida during all of that. So I'm very, very lucky. Uh, but it was, that was hard as hell. Like the hardest thing I've ever gone through, right? It, it really messed with my head a lot. And then, you know, you're in a place that kind of just, once you get injured, you kind of just get forgotten about. And that was really hard for me as well. Cause you just don't feel a part of the team anymore. Right. You're just kind of off in the background, wishing you were there doing the thing you love the most. And so it was super, super hard. So then to come out of that and end up at Daly's place, you know, I was like, well, you know, I felt so good about my knee, like still to this day, I'm like, I'm pretty sure that quad is stronger than my other one, just cause you focus so much on it. Right. But, um, I felt, I felt so good once I got kind of like got the reps under my belt and then everybody was so positive about it. I'm like, Oh, it's the thing, right? It's the thing I've been doing and that I love and hopefully I'm okay at. Uh, well, you did get to make your return to the ROH AEW scene uh, this past summer. Um, mm -hmm. I was actually, I don't know why I was surprised to see you backstage, uh, but the the moment you, it was like, okay, Chris is here, like this this makes sense. Uh, but uh, the moment you showed up, I was, I was excited, right? It was like, oh, Rachel's back. And, uh, and that really started your current run, which uh, you know you've been in Ring of Honor now almost this is almost six months now, um, yeah. and uh, it started with you challenging at the time uh, the New Japan Strong Women's Champion uh, Willow Nightingale, um, and that obviously created wow. that created the the vision of you that people got to get to see today and and led to where you've been. Um, so let's talk about how that came together and how uh, your run back in Ring of Honor began. Yeah. So actually, Chris wasn't there yet. Was he not? No. He um he because I know two... he started around June ish. Yeah. It was like maybe a end of that month is when he came and was like, okay, I'm going to kind of do like a little test run and kind of see how the producing coaching stuff goes. And dude, this yeah. summer was a blur. Like we were in right. camp yeah. for half of it. Like, I don't yeah. even remember. What that's, was that's where I remember Chris around. Cause I know he was there for forbidden door. And so yeah. that's where, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. So it was maybe like a week or two after that ROH taping in Orlando that uh, he talked with Sanjay and they kind of organized all of that. And, I every now and then joke, I'm like, you're welcome. Not that not that you have credentials on your own. It probably was me wrestling Willow in Orlando. <laughs> but um that I loved that experience. Like, I don't know, the energy is just a little different when you're at Universal and you're you know, on this like the sound stage or whatever. Is that what they call a sound stage? No, it's yeah. sound stage. Okay. I was like, yeah, why does that sound, sound weird? Um, it just was like a very cool vibe. And yeah, it was nice to see people I hadn't seen in a minute. And then I had wrestled Willow, you know, a couple times prior to that, but it had been, oh my gosh, probably four years. I want to say since the last time we had been in a ring together. So I was just tickled you guys. I was so thrilled. And like that belt uh, for belt nerds, I don't know if they love it or not, but I just love it. Like the light purple and uh, it just like fit her motif so well you know, uh -huh. too. And I, she's just wonderful. I mean, uh, people know that obviously now, but she really is wonderful just in and out of the ring. And so it was just a joy. And there were a lot of people in the crowd that I was really familiar with because it's like I lived in Orlando. You know, a lot of them were at show, 100 shows I had been on. And so it was kind of nice, right? There's like these friendly faces in the crowd. And 
uh, when they, you know, brought me to the ring, I didn't have an entrance or anything, you know, just, I looked out and saw a few people and like said hi. And they were like, oh, this is great. We can't wait to boo who's coming out next. Right. And I was like, <laughs> oh no, oh no, no, no. Like, don't, you're not going to boo her. Like no chance. Right. And then of course her music hits and I'm like, see what I mean? Like I'm about to cheer for her. <laughs> I'm like, should I do her clap? No, no, okay. Little kick. <laughs> yeah, her kick. Oh, she's the best, right? <laughs> so that was so fun. And like it was really cool to say, oh, you know, hey, I got to I got to wrestle Willow for the New Japan Strong title. Um, and you know, it wasn't like this 30 minute extravaganza or something, but it's like, oh, this is this is just so great. Like what the chance ROH is kind of getting again here and everybody really busting their butt there. And you kind of see it in person that day and you're like, Oh man, this has like a good feel to it. And so, you know, you kind of start to picture yourself places again. And like we all do a hundred different times in our life. Right. Well, I could see myself doing this. I could fit here. And that really did kind of start and lead to now. Uh, Cause then a couple weeks later, I want to say we, there were shows in North Carolina and South Carolina. That, that's what Carolina. I'm. That's what I was remembering because yes. I, I was yeah. picture as soon as you said Orlando, I was like, oh yeah, because so, I was remembering you at TV, and that was after Chris, yeah. and so that was where I was like, okay, but I forget that there was the Orlando tapings. That everything about last year feels so long ago because once Collision came around, it was like everything so changed. The entire formula of what we do changed, and. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like Aubrey said, this summer especially just really is like, I don't remember what happened in certain months, right? I'm like, was that this summer? Huh? Who knew? But yeah, it was like a couple weeks later. Maybe I have that wrong. Someone can look it up and let me know. But um, a couple weeks later, I live in Charlotte. And so they were, you know, you guys were around the area and asked me to come back. And I've kind of been there almost every single weekend since, um, which I can't express how much I love that. It's uh, It was really exciting, and there's a little bit more to talk about this coming up on AEW Unrestricted. Unrestricted. AEW Unrestricted, Aubrey, Will, Rachel, we're talking lots of fun stuff. Her uh, debut at the, the tag tournament, uh, the women's tag tournament. We have, you know, Orlando, ROH, and then right before we went to break, we were talking about sort of your coming to ROH in North Carolina when we were there. And then you've sort of been a fixture every single weekend. And I was like making the joke, like, Hey, do you work here yet? Like, <laughs> please, like, who can I talk to? <laughs> because I was just so like, the moment Chris had told me like, Hey, are you going to be in North Carolina? Cause like Rachel's going to be here. And I'm like, oh, yes, yes, yes. Because not only are you just a great addition to our team as a wrestler, but I mean, we're, we're talking about your energy pretty much all the time, but like, you're such a great addition to a locker room because mm -hmm. it's such a delicate place because you have so many different personalities you're managing and there's different levels of chaos on a given day. So to have someone that's just like a strong, sturdy, positive force consistently every week, I'm like, I just really like fingers crossed. I hope we get her because she's just great. And like, there's no negatives here. <laughs> it's only positive. Stop, Aubrey, stop. Please. I know, right? Right. <laughs> so it was just like, oh, I'm so it's happy. So we're, like, the fact that we're like on this now, I'm like, good, we made it. We're here. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what was it like coming and doing Ring of Honor every single week with us? I have loved it. I've flat out loved it. And I think a lot of people come in and it's like, everybody wants to be on Dynamite. Everybody wants to be on, you know, it's like, of course, these are awesome shows, live TV, like that's spectacular. Um, I have just really fallen in love with ROH again. Um, I say again, because I love like olden days ROH, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so it's very, very cool to be a part of the current, you know, ROH. Um, I've just loved it because every week when I go out, I'm like, oh, it's just a chance for me to like introduce myself to a new audience, right? Because I feel like nobody knows who I am there. And it's kind of a fun feeling. I, I know a lot of people are like afraid of that feeling like nobody's going to react when I come out. And I just love that challenge of like, oh, we're in St. Louis, Missouri, right? One, I've never wrestled here. 
you know, that commission state stuff, will it'll get you, but oh boy. So, <laughs> right. Right. Um, and so, you know, it's like, Oh, great. It's a whole new crop of people I can introduce myself to. And, um, I just love that. Like there's now multiple women's storylines on ROH and to kind of be in that second one that got added a few months ago, I was like thrilled, just thrilled. You know, Billy and Athena obviously have been crushed. I mean, they made them out of the last pay-per-view, right? So they've been doing the damn thing. Um, but it was really, really cool to kind of just be inserted in, okay, we're going to add like a second storyline and obviously not as major as the stuff they're doing. You can't really top what they're doing when they're going to main event something. Um, but I was so thrilled for that opportunity. Um, I had only worked with Layla the one time and it was when we wrestled each other. Uh, and so it's just been cool to kind of get to know her throughout this process as well. And like you said, I've just suddenly kind of been on the show every week. And you did ask me maybe like 18 times, are we coworkers yet? <laughs> and it was just, it feels so good. Cause I'm like, oh good. She's not telling anyone like kick this girl out of the building. She doesn't belong here. <laughs> <laughs> but I, it's like, it's such a good locker room as it is. Like the, you know, I'm mostly on Saturdays. I've been to a few Wednesdays, but the Saturday crew is awesome. You know? So I just feel lucky to kind of be a part of it. And I look forward to having those many conversations you have with people throughout the day. Right. And, you know, just hearing about little trips they went on or their family or how they're doing. I love that stuff. Right. And so it's just been cool to kind of like consistently be a part of the locker room and then be a part of this second little storyline going on and, you know, the TV title tournament coming up. And so I, I'm, I just like feel honored. Should I say that to be there? Um, but you just, after you kind of go through stuff in wrestling, I feel like you can get a different perspective on things or right? like anything you kind of hit a low point. And when you come out of that, you just look at things a little bit differently. Right. And not that my mindset is like, oh, I'm just happy to be here because of course I have a million goals I want to achieve, but there is just like this sense of pure joy. I get just being able to do the thing I'm absolutely obsessed with and do it in an arena every weekend, right? Like that's so cool when you just say it like a sentence like that, like, oh yeah, I just casually wrestle in an arena full of people every weekend. Like that's the coolest thing, right? And so I'm really glad that like, I've kind of regained that perspective on things and then I can do it every week with ROH. Uh, I love that. And I, I again, that's, I think the second time I've, I've heard that sentiment and it's just a reminder second time recently in like the last week I've heard that sentiment. And um, yeah, it's such a cool opportunity to get to do that every single week. And just almost that reminder when you wake up in the hotel the next night of or the next morning, like this is my life. This is so cool. This is fun. Yeah. Um, but uh, let's talk about teaming with Layla Hirsch um, and how that's been these last few months. Uh, and getting the, the chemistry going under the two of you and between the two of you. How has that been? It's been so fun, Will. Uh, my favorite thing about Layla, I'm sure Aubrey knows this, she doesn't get sarcasm. No, she doesn't. No. And so, oh my, so what? I just have a ball with it because I'm super sarcastic. And, uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, we, uh, we wrestled Diamante and Mercedes. And I, at one point, you know, they have like, they do their like gunshot thing on their entrance. They're like really cool. <laughs> and I'm just like this white girl from Minnesota. <laughs> and so I was joking when I said it, but I'm like, Layla, maybe we come out and we pull out our guns and we do a like gun routine. And she's like, I really don't like that idea right now. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, Layla, like read the room, brother. <laughs> No. And so there are always, there's probably like two or three times a week that something like that comes up where she just looks back at you like, you're an idiot. And it's <laughs> so funny then the moment when I'm like, oh, buddy, I'm just joking. Like, and then she's like, I'm sorry. Sometimes I just can't read sarcasm. And I'm like, sometimes, sometimes. it's all the time, baby. <laughs> like, it's all the time. But it's been so fun. We wrestled the one time. And now, you know, we've just kind of been joined at the hip ever since with the storyline with Maria and coming out of that now. Um, I've particularly enjoyed doing pre-tape promo stuff with her because uh, they're she doesn't love them, right? She's learning to like them. Meanwhile, I'm obsessed with that kind of stuff. Like, 
I love it. I want to do it every week when I'm there. I'm like, can I get a pre-tape today? I know you guys are busy, but I'd love to have one, right? It's just something I genuinely love doing. Um, oh, and- pre-tapes are a, a blast. Uh, I, I think. Thank you. Yes. But, but, well, it's, again, pulling back the, the curtain a little bit. I've been directing pre-tapes a lot lately. And, uh, and again, the fun of finding different ways to introduce them and... Uh, and I, I almost don't want to use the term pre-tape because, like, people don't know. They're, they are a part of the show. As far as you know, it's just the, the flowing of the, the show. And what are we talking about when we say pre-tape? You don't but, know it was but, recorded ahead of time. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Backstage. Hey, it's all Lamar, right? Yeah, oh, yeah so no. Live. No, absolutely. Uh, I, there are ones where, when they're live, and I'm just sitting there like, oh, my God, this has to go well because you only get one shot at it. Uh <laughs> What was it on Collision last week? It was uh, Private Party interrupting Top Flight with uh, Lexi Nair on Collision. And, the Durag? Uh, the, the, the Durag. That was live as live can be. And uh, <laughs> I howled. I laughed so yeah, hard. This is so good. That was uh, so great. Everything went as smoothly as that could go. But all of those elements and uh, knowing with those guys, how it could go. It was just so great. It was, it was such a blast. But yeah, I, I'm with you. Pre-tapes are so fun. And I love them. I love them. And Layla's learning to like them, but it's been fun to kind of like, no, buddy, these are really fun. Like, we can make it what we want, right? And we can be creative. And uh, we did one the other day. I'm sure it'll have aired by the, the time this comes out. She was like, I just, um, thoughts on me mentioning being hungry for sushi. <laughs> This had nothing, absolutely zero to do with what we were talking about. But I was like, you know what? You know, when someone gets excited about something, you just want to feed that excitement. So I was like, deal. We're finding a way. We will find a way to insert your hunger for sushi. Okay. And so I'm like, I'll just throw in a thing earlier in the promo so that can kind of tie it in at the end. It was just, and afterwards she was so thrilled about it. Right. And so then you get like, I don't know. I get energy from that where I'm like, yes, she's kind of learning to love these. And I mean, it helps that like Lexi is such a pro. I can't emphasize enough not to go off on a Lexi Nair thing here, but you guys, she is so good at her job. I love her. She's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. She is. I just, sometimes we're doing a promo and I'm like, look at how pretty she is. Look at her. Aubrey, do you remember a few weeks ago, her luggage got lost? And yes. I jokingly was like, oh, yes, finally Lexi will look like crap on one of these shows. Like, <laughs> good for her. We all need to experience that one time, right? No, she could put on a bag and she's just like, I'm luxury. I'm beauty. She's so wonderful and just great at her job. So it's like fun every week to kind of be like, look, Layla, see, we can all have fun together doing this. And then, you know, it's cool. Oh, I can do my move into your move. And, you know, the wrestling part kind of, flows a little bit easier but it's been it's been really cool it's been cool we had a show in charlotte a couple weeks ago so i picked her up at the airport we went to breakfast brought her to the house so she could meet our three cats yay yeah yeah and so you know we also have kind of been bonding outside of just strictly oh this is what we're doing wrestling wise and i i love getting to know people in their stories so and she has quite the story oh yeah dude very 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 much so yeah um I know you've got quite the story as well. You've got kind of this crazy background in powerlifting that you had started before you were even in wrestling school. How the hell do you get into powerlifting? (laughs) So I powerlifted for like two and a half years in college, right? Like uh, the last two and a half years before I got my bachelor's degree. Um, My dad powerlifted. And so I've always kind of been around that. My mom powerlifted. So I had been to meets as a little kid. And, you know, my parents owned a gym when I was growing up. And so I've always kind of been around that. But before I started powerlifting, I like, I loved running and, you know, basketball, volleyball, softball. I played those in high school. And so I wasn't like this super avid, like, let me hit the weights hard kind of thing. Right. And then my mom brought it up and was just like, hey, I, you should just try it. Right. I think you'd be really good at it. Like, we can meet with this guy who she had known for years. That was a powerlifting coach. And she's like, there's nothing to it. Like we go, well, I'll go with you. Right. We'll meet him. You can kind of try it out for a day. And if you hate it, 
there's no pressure to it. Right. And I was like, Oh, okay. I kind of just did it to like, get my mom off my back <laughs> that for when I was like, fine, I'll go meet with him. All right, mom. And I do anything for my mom. You guys, she's just my bestie. Like I love her so much. And so I'm like, at least at minimum, it's a road trip with my mom. Right. So like sign me up. And so we go and I think literally my first deadlift, which I had never done before. I was like, I think I love this. It's just so addicting to like, oh, no, I, I can do a little bit more, right? Put a little bit more weight on the bar. And it's that competitive thing, right? Like I've always been an athlete and super competitive. And so it's like, well, in powerlifting, you're, you either lift the weight or you don't. There's nothing helping you, right? Like you're not reliant on other people. It is you, the work you've put in. And then it's just pushing yourself as hard as you can, right? And I like had the time of my life doing that. I met so many good people, people I still keep in touch with now. And like, if I'm ever back home in Minnesota, like I'll get them tickets to the shows I'm on and make sure I can see like just good, a good community. Right. Um, and then I was lucky. I was decent at it. And, you know, I, I obviously still am obsessed with lifting weights. I don't compete anymore. It's been a long time since I've like really maxed out on lifts because I try to just preserve this old body for wrestling. <laughs> I think it's almost impossible to like compete in powerlifting and wrestle at the same time, just because they're so just, you really, really push your body in both of them. Right. And it's like, Oh, I, I gotta be healthy for, for my job. And so I've kind of committed my body to wrestling, but I still am obsessed with lifting weight. So I was lucky. I had a great experience with powerlifting. God, this is such a great conversation and such a, a great insight into what makes Rachel Ellering tick. And we've got so much more to talk about right here when AEW unrestricted continues. AEW Unrestricted, it's Aubrey, it's Will, and we are with the one and only Rachel Ellering. We're talking about grandma energy. We're talking about powerlifting. Um, <laughs> yeah, talking about cats. Uh, but, you know, we say the name Rachel Ellering. Uh, and, of course, whenever you say that name, uh, the, the Ellering definitely sticks out because, uh, you know, you, you briefly mentioned your father before because you mentioned him being uh, a powerlifter himself. But uh, the Hall of Famer, Paul Ellering, uh, very famed wrestling manager, managed the Road Warriors, um, more recently managed the Authors of Pain. Um, so talk about growing up uh, the daughter of uh, wrestling royalty, in a, in a sense. Did you, uh, what was your taste for pro wrestling like? being around it as much as you were growing up so i guess i'll claim him today uh yeah he is my dad and it's really funny will i think a lot of people and maybe most of them do right but i think a lot of people assume generational multi-generational talents have like all grown up around wrestling and i had a total opposite experience of that uh, my dad did not let us watch it he didn't take us to shows uh it really when I fell in love with wrestling, I was 16 and it was just me like going down a YouTube rabbit hole, right? Of like, wait, what now? And you know, what, Trish and Lita, wow, they main evented a show. Let me watch this match 19 times tonight, right? And just like falling in love with it through YouTube and then watching weekly and kind of doing that on my own and like, oh my gosh, Beth Phoenix, I'm obsessed with her, right? That kind of still am actually. So, <laughs> you know, some things stay with you your whole life. Um, and so I had a different experience that I think a lot of generational talents, um, I can understand why he kind of kept his family life separate from his work life. We went to one show with him and it was after they had like retired and everything. And it was 2002, I want to say. And it was just like, an independent show in Chicago. They were being honored for something, but they were also on the show. And so we go and it was like my first wrestling show I had ever been to. And so I remember making like a sign for my uncle Hawk and, you know, just, he was my favorite. I have like a Hawk tattoo on my shoulder blade, right for him. And I'm in the front row, like holding up this sign. Like I love my uncle Hawk or whatever it said, right? Go road warriors. And the guy, one of the guys they were wrestling came over and ripped my sign. Oh, and I was devastated, right? <laughs> and after the show, my Uncle Hawk comes out of the locker room and he's like, hey, somebody's got something they want to say to you. And 
brings out the guy that ripped my sign and the guy <laughs> made the guy apologize to me. It's like something, it's one of those core memories you never forget. The guy apologizing and just like in character, Uncle Hawk standing there like, tell her what you were going to say. Tell her. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, yeah, you apologize. Like, of course. <laughs> and so that was like my only experience, like kind of going to work with my dad, right? And so very different than most people think it would be. Uh, when I told him I wanted to be a wrestler, he was like, absolutely not. We hear that story a lot, that. honestly. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, you have scholarships, you know, for college and whatnot. Like, go get your degree and, you know, we'll kind of talk about it later. And I think he thought it was just a phase I was maybe going to grow out of. Right? <laughs> Jokes on him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, joke. Uh, and you know what? I did go to college. I did get my bachelor's degree. I didn't phone it in. Like I graduated with Latin and national honors. So I did the thing, you know, I power lifted while I was there. And so I tried to like make the most of my years, but I, um, I like made my degree so wrestling centric. It's a joke. Like I initially started as a PT student, right? So I was in this doctor of physical therapy program realized it was going to take six years and that's just too long because I just need to get to the wrestling portion here. And so I changed to become a communications major. And that's what my bachelor's degree is, you know, minor in marketing and psychology. It's pro wrestling, right? And I'm like, oh, good. I can just do all this. And so it worked out well, but he was just like, I do not want you to be doing this. And so very different than most people, you know, think, but it's, it's fun now to like go back and watch his stuff. Like the earlier, even when he was like a wrestler, right? Like a baby. He reminds me so much of my younger brother. It's like creepy, but it's kind of fun to go back and watch all that stuff with just almost like fan eyes, right? Because it's not like I experienced it in live time. And then, you know, by the time I was a kid, he had really stepped away from wrestling. So a little different than than most people would assume. So the the school powerlifting all that sort of stuff how did you end up at just moving my computer come here oh, buddy <laughs> come I, here i love the cat moving the computer a little bit yep uh, okay all right here's gino <laughs> yeah here we go it only took us three segments until we got a cat on camera yes right <laughs> susan has fallen asleep right here but <laughs> i'm done whatever yeah yeah so so you're in you're in school communications degree minors power lifting how did you end up heading towards uh lance storm's wrestling academy yeah so i um i had met natty when i was 16 or 17 and we had kept in touch with each other and she's like hey whenever you want to get started like you let me know and i'll help in any way that i can right and so my senior year of college um you know i was just talking to her about stuff and then i was like you know what let me mention it hey you know, I graduate college. This is my last semester or whatever. She's like, okay, let me get you in touch with someone here, you know, and see, see what can happen. And so that kind of led to me, I think it was like five days after my college graduation, I had a WWE tryout. No time. Had, no time. I, I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, I was terrified. I had never stepped foot in a ring before in my entire life. And so, you know, you're obviously not there like having a match then in that situation. But, you know, I get in the ring for the first time just to do these roles and the stuff you're doing at a tryout. My It was literally my first time ever in a pro wrestling ring. And so, yeah, it was a crazy experience. And, you know, it was like this three day tryout and it went super well. Um, I got told they were hiring me after it. So that was great. It's like, wow, look at me. <laughs> right. You just think, oh, this was easy. So glad this is working out exactly how I pictured it, right? Okay, insert cat number two into the, <laughs> the video feed here. This is Susan, everybody. Hey, um, Susan. You're doing great, beauty. Um, <laughs> and so I, I get told I'm going to get hired. And then, you know, a month or so passes. And, oh, we're going to push your start date, right? And I just, when I decided I wanted to be a pro wrestler, it didn't have to be in, like, a certain spot. Like, I just want to be a pro wrestler, right? I don't care if it's in front of four people, you know, in a VFW, like, I just want to do it. It's what I love. And so I, um, that's kind of what led me to moving to Calgary, because I didn't want to just sit around and wait until they were like, okay, you'll start here, but then they change it again. And, you know, just the uncertainty. I'm like, well, I'm doing it either way, right? It doesn't have to be there. So I moved up to Calgary. And then I was up there for six months. 
I did my three months with Lance for his class. And then I just stayed another three because I got bookings in Canada. And I still to this day, you guys, Calgary is like my favorite city I've ever lived in. And so I was just spoiled to have such a wonderful experience up there. And and then I moved straight from Calgary to Orlando. So that's how that all came about. Damn. Yeah. Uh, well, and so that time period. Well, OK, so I want to talk about a couple of things. Um, <laughs> uh, first off, I, I think I know the answer, but I am curious about the, the name you sported at that period uh, because you were Rachel Evers. Um, and so obviously having a, a famous wrestling father, you know, the the, the, uh, the general trope in professional wrestling is probably that you want to stick with that. But of course, um, in that system, they almost frown upon that in a way. Um, where, what was the origin of the name Rachel Evers? And, uh, and particularly, um, did you feel like you wanted a separate identity in that same fashion? So I've always felt that I've wanted like a separate identity in a way, right? When I started wrestling, gosh, it ended up being four years before I actually ended up in NXT. So I was just Rachel Ellering, right? My whole career before going there. Um, but I have always been so focused on like just doing it on my own, right? Like anything I get in wrestling, I want to know, like I've earned it on my own, right? My dad hasn't had any hand in it, um, you know, he's somewhat supportive of me being a wrestler now, but like still, I, I still think there's like that sliver of parent hesitancy there. Um, <laughs> but you know, it's like, oh, any successes I've had, it's, it's nice knowing when I go to bed, like, oh, I've, I've earned that on my own. Right. And then when I got to NXT and I was told I'd have to change my name, I wanted to keep my initials RE and then Evers, uh, was Lance Storm's real last name. Mm, so yeah. it was, sense. you know, like a nice homage to my trainer and, you know, someone who was just really, really crucial to me my first couple of years in wrestling, right? Like taught me everything I knew to get started. And so it was like a nice little tribute to him. And um, they changed the spelling of Rachel as well, right? So it was the more traditional spelling of Rachel on like my R-E-C-H-A-E-L, which is how it's spelled uh, and always misspelled, right? But, um, you know, now I'm now I'm just back to my real name, which I really like. There you go. I like, so, so as someone who is on TV, not as their government name, yes. I personally find that like my phone auto corrects to the wrong name all the time because yeah, it's yeah. just close enough. Like, do you have that issue too? <laughs> so I obviously don't, right? My, me and my phone were besties. And so we've got it sorted, but everybody else, oh my gosh, on every now and then, even like my sister or somebody, and I'm like, excuse me, like, you've known me since I came out of the womb. Like you can't be spelling my name wrong. And so it happens all the time. I have people, you know, on flyers and for promoting matches and stuff like they'll spell my name wrong. It happens all the time. I blame my parents. They had to be creative with the spelling. It's always great. It's always yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, what was your experience like with the, uh, the two May Young Classic tournaments? Oh, well, those were so fun. Um, one, that's where I met Aubrey. Yes. Yeah. So that's a good memory for me. Um, they were great. There was like such a sense of community between everybody that was there for that because so many of us were outsiders that weren't employed there. Right. And so it's like, we all know each other from this outside world and kind of have each other's backs. Right. And want each other to do well. And well, at least I did. I wanted everybody to do well. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's like, you you just have a sense of community and it makes the whole experience better, right? It's kind of like I said, why I really love being a part of ROH and just makes the whole thing wonderful. Um, and then they're just super memorable for me. Like I had a couple of still to this day, like one of my favorite matches that I've had is with Hiroyo Matsumoto, first round of Mae Young 2. And I loved that match. It was so fun. And I had been in Japan with her prior. So it was like just a treat for me to be able to then be over here. And you know, she's got like this cool Godzilla gimmick and it was just wonderful. Um, and so the crowds are like what I remember most about those though. Fun matches, but the crowds were so invested and gave everything to all of us. Like every single match, like the energy was there and that just makes su such a difference, right? In the whole show. And it was obviously so many immensely talented girls were a part of those. 
And so to share a locker room with them and share a ring with them, you know, I was super, super lucky to be a part of both of them. I think there's always the stigma that like the women in wrestling are trying to like keep each other down. But like, I absolutely agree. Like that was one of the things that is super memorable for me for the Mae Young is that like everyone kind of came together and whether or not you were signed or not, like everyone kind of comes from the same background. So everyone's just excited to see other people succeed. And it's one of the things that I love watching with our locker room, whether it's AEW or ROH, like the women are trying to like, be supportive of everybody like we've got everyone's backs we're excited to see everybody doing everything like we're excited to see athena and billy main event a pay-per-view we're excited to see all of these awesome things uh what has it been like for you being a woman in wrestling and kind of seeing how things are progressing at this moment in time it's i feel like i came into wrestling at like the perfect time right it was really when it's like oh yeah okay the girls can go so we'll give them time and and chances to prove that right and so i got really lucky with that because obviously there's prior generations that they really had to work to try to just get a five minute match right and now it's like well we see that every single week that's like a walk in the park you know Mm -hmm. And so I'm really grateful that they all went through that so we could all be doing what we get to do today, right? Um, And I think you're spot on, Aubrey. It's like, we all want to see each other do well and support each other. And we all want to go out there and just absolutely crush it with whatever we're given, right? If it ends up being three minutes, hey, we're all on the same page with, you know what, let's make the most of the three minutes. But then, you you know, you mentioned Billy and Athena. It's like, yeah, they're going to go out for... 25 and i went out in the crowd and watched that match just because it's a different feel when you're out there with the crowd right and you just feel such a sense of pride in those moments right of like oh look at them look at those like they're doing it you know and it it just brings like this extra positivity because then the whole room is like hey we could also be doing that right so let's keep pushing each other and and grinding and hopefully we're all kind of in these spots that when you're called on you know your number's called and it's like oh easy, let's go. I'm ready because everybody here is like helped me get ready for that. Right. And I think another thing about like the locker room currently, um, like you mentioned earlier, this whole last couple months, it's like, I haven't been under a deal of any kind. And so it would have been really easy for a lot of girls there to kind of be like, uh, what's the deal? Like, why is she get to be in this little storyline on ROH or why is she on every week? Like what's going on with that? And not one person has been like that. Right. And it's just such a good feeling because that hasn't always been the case with everything I've been a part of and different companies and work, you know, we all have worked with a few buttheads here or there and all, you know, all jobs. We all have those every now and then, but this is like the first time I'm like, oh, it's nice. I leave the room and I don't think anyone's like, oh, Rachel's here again. I hate this. (laughs) Right. I'm like, oh man, I could go to these girls for anything. And I think that's consistent across the board. So great. So, yeah, I, oh, I love that. And honestly, I, I agree with you that I think this is uh, just such a wonderful time. And it's such a wonderful time to have you be a part of everything that's happening across Ring of Honor. And uh, and it's been such a wonderful chat. And, Thanks, uh, guys. and I'm so happy that we got to do this and that you got to be a part of this. Uh, this being AEW Unrestricted, which you can find uh, everywhere you get your podcasts on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. These episodes release every Thursday. Um, you can also watch it on our YouTube channel every Monday. Um, you can also watch AEW Dynamite every Wednesday at 8 p.m. on TBS. AEW Rampage is on every Friday at 10 p.m. on TNT, and AEW Collision is on every Saturday at 8 p.m. on TNT. You can also watch new episodes of Ring of Honor where you can see the lovely and talented Rachel Ellering. Uh, That's available on Honor Club every Thursday. This has been AEW Unrestricted. I'm Will Washington. That's Aubrey Edwards. Yes, she is. (laughs) We'll see you next time. Have a great day. Peace. Bye.